Welcome to April's Reading Recap, where I discuss all of the books that I read last month. So over April, some of my friends at the Author Conservatory organized a bit of a reading challenge, and I thought I might have had a chance to win. I did not. I read about 2,000 pages, and I thought that was pretty good, but there were a couple students that read close to 9,000 pages, and I was not even in the running for the prize. Anyways, I did read a lot more than usual this month, and I read some really awesome books this month. A couple iffy books, but some really awesome books as well. So I wanted to share with you what books I read this month. So unlike last month, when I could share a beautiful pan of all three books I read and share their covers, I can't do that. There's too many books this month. So I'll just lift them up in the stack. Ta-da! Aren't they pretty? So this was the stack of books that I read this month. So we will start with the first one that I read this month, Echoes of the Titanic. First glance, I thought this was a historical fiction book. It's not. Okay, there is historical fiction in it, but it's mostly contemporary. And it was so incredibly good. And by good, I mean I was seriously thinking about this book for like months after because I could not stop thinking about it because there's a mystery and I actually couldn't solve it, which I love. So in Echoes of the Titanic, the author did a phenomenal job setting up the characters. You have Gloria and Kelsey, and there is a mystery boyfriend who actually doesn't come in until like way later in the book, so it's not actually a romance. Surprisingly, even though the back cover blurb makes it really sound like it's a romance, it's not. At least not for like 90% of the book. Okay, maybe more like 50 or 75. Anyways, I digress. As the events continued and things got deeper and worse, Gloria as a character who you'll, if you read this book, you'll understand who she is, but she became increasingly more confusing and I felt led on in a sort of way as I followed Kelsey and had to discover the truth about what happened with her. And the author did a really great job about not giving away too much, but giving away little tidbits that made you wonder things and start thinking through things, but you just couldn't figure it out. And so they did a really awesome job messing with your mind and making it a really awesome mystery. <laughs> it kept me glued to my seat. It was such an amazing read. I've read this in just a few days. It was just really, really well written. The story was awesome. So it bounced back and forth between a contemporary story with Kelsey, who was, I believe, the great, great granddaughter of a survivor on the Titanic. Okay, she might've been a great granddaughter. I think it was a great granddaughter. I can't remember. I read this at the beginning of the month and that was a few weeks ago. And then it had a historical fiction side and that was like one chapter every three or four contemporary chapters, which followed Adele, who was Kelsey's great grandmother who started this whole company. And it was just really well woven together. I really enjoyed the contemporary side more. I mean, the historical fiction side was okay, but and it's, it's predictable because the Titanic sinks and everyone knows the Titanic sinks. So I really enjoyed the contemporary going into it and all the mystery that went through that. And all the characters were super well written, super interesting, super layered, and I just really enjoyed it. One note though, it does contain a suicide pretty early on. So if that is an issue, maybe stay away from the book. And it is a pretty big point in the book due to the fact that it kind of triggers a lot of the story and a lot of things happen because of that and then you get to discover what happened behind it and all of that mystery and intrigue. Anyways, it was super well written. I really, really enjoyed the story and following along on these characters. So that was Echoes of the Titanic. The next book that I read is considerably thicker. Ta-da! It's like 700 and more than that pages. And this one was a roller coaster for me. I will definitely say that I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. So on one hand, it was really, really well written, super gritty, well researched. The characters felt really real. It felt very desperate in the time. It's another Soviet Russian novel. I don't know why I got into Soviet Russian novels. That was kind of an accident, but I've read a couple lately. Um, and so it was really, really well done in a sense of being well researched. The characters were written really well. There was a really good desperation to it because of the setting and all that was going on and the emotions were spot on. On the other hand, there was a ton of language and there were quite a few scenes that I wasn't exactly comfortable with. It's not Christian and it's not clean. So know that as you're going into it. Um, another thing is 250 pages in, I kind of realized that it was a sequel. Yeah, <laughs> that's me because I didn't research the book before I started reading it. Um, so yeah, it is a sequel. 
And at the beginning, I was like, oh, they're setting up characters, they're hinting at stuff. Oh, it's so great foreshadowing. And then I just realized, no, they expect that you know the characters, and I don't. So <laughs> it wasn't foreshadowing. It was just I didn't know who they were talking about, so I had to figure it out, which I don't mind. I can follow along with stories pretty well, even if I don't know the context. So overall, I will say, though, she did a really phenomenal job pulling me into the story and all the setting and the realness. It was very raw, really gritty, really desperate. Like, you could feel the pain that the characters were going through. There's one scene in particular that I'm thinking of that was really, really a lot and I I mean it was it was really well written in the fact that it brought you into the pain and the depravity of it but it was also kind of nightmarish and it was a little bit terrifying and so that was one of the points where I'm like maybe I shouldn't keep reading this book but I did because I wanted to know what happened next and it did get better it did it resolved well it was definitely a more gritty novel not really clean not not at all Christian <laughs> and I mean I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you're writing a Soviet novel I feel like it would be very good research because she really got into the head and the setting really super well. So that is Chimes of a Lost Cathedral. I don't think I actually shared the name of the book before I started talking about it. So this was Chimes of a Lost Cathedral. Next, I read a very short book. So we went from like 700 plus pages to a novella. So this is the Shifting Current. Fans of the Coastal Guardian series will probably love this book a bit more than I did just because they knew the characters and I didn't. I came onto it cold because I've never read anything by her before. That said, my grandma was here a few days ago and she walked into my bedroom and she saw this book lying on my shelf and she's like, oh, that's so cool. She released a new book. I've read everything she ever wrote and I love her so much. So that was cool. I did enjoy this book. It was really fast paced and well written. I read it in like two hours or something. We had a car drive, so I, I finished it pretty fast, which was nice after having read a really, really long book. But the characters were really well motivated and little hints that his grandfather dropped along the way that kind of led to the unveiling of what had happened were really sweet and really interesting. So that was The Shifting Current. After that, I kind of wanted to do a throwback because I felt like I needed it after having read some pretty intense books. So I went back to The Hunger Games and yes, this is the fifth time I have read this book in a year. <laughs> I don't reread books that much, but yeah confession time. I really like this book. <laughs> I'm not usually the biggest into fandoms, but that was one that I actually got into last year. Um, and I will say it was research because I have characters in my upcoming book that have similar personalities or there are similar dynamics between certain characters. So I will say that I read it for research. Technically, I just liked the book and I needed something to read that was fast. So that was The Hunger Games. <laughs> And yes, I read it again. Until then, I'm doing actual research and I'd read a World War II novel called The German Wife. I read this book about a year ago, I believe, and I loved it. I love all of her World War II books. They're incredible. They're so well written, so deep. Um, they really break your heart. Um, and this one is no different. But I read this one specifically because the novel that I'm about to start writing or actually have started writing is set in Germany and it's kind of got similar dynamics with the fact that it's set in Germany with characters that are high up and I just wanted to get into that culture and that mindset and so I was reading The German Wife and this book is fantastic like it all research purposes aside, this book is amazing. It's a dual POV between two different sides of World War II. The German side actually follows Operation Paperclip, which was an American program that brought German scientists into America to help with rocket launch. And so there was a lot of suspicion that a lot of the guys who were brought over as scientists that were really, really geniuses, that they were probably Nazis and that they had been parts of concentration camps and stuff like that. And so it was a really interesting perspective on that side of it because it followed the wife of a German scientist who was forced into doing a ton of stuff that he was not comfortable with, but it was to save his family. And this whole conflict of, is it worth risking everything and killing others to save ourselves? And by the end, it really hit uh, 
deep place that I'm not going to reveal because it was really amazing and I want you to read it and you can find the reveal yourself. And then the other side of it was a girl named Lizzie who was from the Great Depression, so in the American side. So we technically have four POVs because we have the younger Sophie and then the older Sophie and then we have the younger Lizzie and the older Lizzie. And the older versions of both of the characters are together and they meet up and there's a lot of drama between them because let's just say certain characters don't understand one another's sides of the stories. I really enjoyed getting into it for another time just as a research purpose to understand the culture and understand how things degraded so quickly and how people were won over by the Nazi regime. So this book is awesome. I highly recommend it, especially if you're into World War II books. I, I love all of her World War II books. They're just phenomenal. And I've read them all more than once. Looking at my stack now, I realize I have this book in my stack again. I don't know why that's here because this was in my previous reading recap and I did not read it again this month because I'm not that crazy. <laughs> so I guess I only read five books this month, not six. So these are all the books that I've read this month. As usual, please comment below the books you read this month and I would love to have a discussion about it. So drop the books that you read in the comment below and I'd love to talk about them. So if you enjoy this video and you want to follow along for more content, please consider subscribing. So make sure to stay tuned and I cannot wait to see you next week. And as always, I mean, I had some pretty funny bloopers, so just stick around for just a few more seconds. All right, I'll see you next week. I read about 2,000 words. I read more than 2,000 words. I read like 2,000 pages. Did I read that this month? That was last month. What books did I read this month? By Danny. I don't want to try and pronounce her name. Never mind. The Nazi ideology. I don't know the word.